everybody and welcome back to another episode of Jurassic World where today we have another glacier creature to unlocketh and it is the Entelodon. Uh, the little piggy looking thing that is the stuff of nightmares and to unlock it we are we have to use the aquatics which kind of makes sense because in order to get the aquatics you need good land and in order to get glacier you need good aquatics. Uh, good thing is these are pretty bad creatures. So all we're going to do is put in Hanodas, and he's going to kick all of their butties. Flap! You don't mess with a frisbee. So I hope you guys are all having a great day today. I've been on a session. I've, I've went through the stages of recording. I've went through having fun to having a sore throat to now not giving a damn. <laughs> oh, no. I'll go for two reserves because he's surely got two, yeah. And then once we've killed giant Orthocone, and he didn't attack me, not so good. Um, one, two, three kills him, and then factor in one, just in case. Oh, he didn't even go for anything, awesome. Now that 929 attack will be nerfed to about 300. Oh, 250 is nothing this Mosasaur can do. Ooh, I was a bit worried, I was like, well he... He could do something. <laughs> uh, he could have completely shut me out there by five block, but he didn't. And Hanodis takes the frisbee. Awesome. I forget we could do the full on seven uh, animation and then just crack the code. So what I kind of want to do with this is also do this one. But saying that, my creatures are all recovering from the uh, the tournament for you, Moon. So that's maybe not going to happen. <laughs> Right, we have Archelon, which is kind of scary there. Um, we need Bonogamous, and then we need Plotosaurus. I think that's probably good enough, because we're going to go for a reserve here. And they're going to switch an Archelon now. If our hey, no hey, 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 no no uh dies, then that's okay, because we've got Bonogamous to take on Archelon. And Bonogamous, even level 30, has so much attack, it's not going to be a problem. We don't have to worry about this. We could even kill him if we wanted to, or at least try. Sorry, faint. Killing sounds a bit evil. <laughs> We're gonna kill the turtle. Uh, what other YouTuber says they've killed a turtle? Um, I'm sure there's somebody out there who, who, who kills turtles, but you're a meanie. And you shouldn't do that because they're endangered. I think. Either way, you shouldn't do it. Because that's not nice. Oh, a full-on seven! Kill it! <laughs> Oh, it's coming for the crackers, cracketh, screeneth. Oh! Oh, what was that? <laughs> he sort of froze. <sighs> Is it over? <laughs> like, usually there's a cracked screen. But not that time. And look, he would kill him in two hits. And we're only level 30. Level 40? Probably still take two hits, but it would be an overkill. You alright there, Megalodon? Mm. Right, so, uh, yeah, for you, um, Bonogamous is gonna completely kill you and your friend. You're dead, your friends are dead, and I've won the Entelodon. Whoosh. Oh, and there he goes again. <laughs> Gotta love that glitch. I like how he goes through the floor. Was, I don't think Bonogamous was really this big. I think, um... In the Q&A livestream, they showed what the uh, glacier creatures would look like, um, all scaled against each other. And some of them were really small, and some of them were, of course, really big. And if they were fighting the tournament, it would look weird. And I can understand that. I really can. Um, some of the creatures, especially with the glacier, look really, really way too small. Um, so if I put in the cave... He's going to switch in the surface. No! Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. But actually, we can go for a full-on eight, can't we? I think we've done this. I think so. How many videos have I recorded today? One, two, three, four, five, six videos. My God, I'm on a roll. And they're all different, like... Oh, to be honest, three of them are the same. Two of them are Jurassic World. Well, two of the Jurassic World, three of the others are the same content, and... I can't remember what the other one is. Oh yeah, that's uh, Primal Carnage, I think. Oh, not Primal Carnage, The Isle, that's right. So I've done loads today. Ah, oh, I'm on fire! 
I thought I'd go for two blocks just in case, because he's probably going to switch in Dunkleosteus. And I don't want to be hit with that. I don't want to be hit with an armored fish. He could bite straight through that shell. I bet he could as well. Uh, so we'll go for a full-on seven. And even if he does block... Uh, I kind of want to see the animation from this angle. How did they manage to mess up that? Oh, he comes back in, but when the the opposition does it, the enemy, it looks really weird. Interesting how they didn't test that. Because in the Q&A, they showed footage testing um, the creatures you unlock against... Like, so you using the uh, specials and the animations and stuff, but not. Maybe they don't test it on the other bots as much. So, enter Ladon. Here we go. Awesome. So, that's 1,500 DNA and enter Ladon. Again, a rare. It's uh, interesting to see that these guys, um, you do get rares. With the aquatics, you didn't as much. Or, you, sorry, you didn't get any at all. So, now we're going to speed up the Hatsagoptrix and hatch another seven Entelodon. So I'm going to do this first. Um, so we'll get to see Entelodon in the uh, chamber and to see his animation. Oh, here we go. Oh, the zoom in. <laughs> I like the little pop. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not, we'll not jump in just now. But while I'm doing the boring stuff of buying the creature over and over and over, um, I can read off some facts so we can learn about the Entelodon. Because I feel like I learned a bit from, like, documentaries and also uh, from Jurassic Park Builder, what the facts they give you. But I thought I'd do some research of my own and also come back with some facts. So, Entelodon, I was sort of wondering what it would be, a carnivore or a herbivore. I mean, it does have those teeth, right? So, they, they look pretty predatory. But, you could also see it sort of grazing. And it's a bit like a dog, pig, weird thing. And dogs and pigs are omnivores. Um, they're, I mean, they're successful because they eat whatever, whatever they can. And it has been concluded, or at least hypothesized, that the Entelodon would have been a um, an omnivore, which means it eats meat and also vegetation. Um, what else have we got on this here thing? Um... Also, it had an incredibly strong bite, but you probably could have guessed that. Uh, its cheekbones protrude out at the sides, and if the documentary is right that uh, I remember, that's so the um, the jaw muscles have something to latch onto in order to anchor it. So, it's it's like on a seesaw. If you've got a, like a long anchor, it takes less pressure to close, like to push the other side up. If you go really close to the seesaw and, and push the uh, same amount of pressure, it doesn't go up as fast, if at all. So if it's got a big anchor, then closing the jaw is going to be even stronger, I think. I could be wrong with that. Uh, it costs 800, so it's not too much. I don't really know how many I have at the moment. I'm sure this must be the sixth. So we'll get... We'll tell you what. Oh, oh, it's in a rainforest. No, no, no. We got one more. We got one more. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's a new scenario. Oh, it's going to be new animations. I can't wait. Okay, let's... Uh, He's the same as Andrew Sarkis. Uh, and they both are res. We'll see what the stats are at uh, level um, 40, too. Not level 40, but 40, comma, T-O-O, -O, two. So here we go. It looks like it's in a rain... Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's hide the stats. And let's just enjoy its idle animation. Zoom in as much as we can and have a look at it. Well, we rattle off some facts. I was actually going to burp there, but um, I thought I would be considerate and not. <laughs> wow, so it is in a rain. Ooh, cool. Little pipe, trees even, and then the Sahara. So this is in its own segment. And just like the other ones, maybe we're going to... Oh, that's where the terror bird is. Just like the terror bird, it is also a savannah, uh, but it's over here. I wonder with the terror bird if we can look over and see this. Probably. Wow. Okay. So other facts about the Entelodon before we see its other animations are that it is closely related to hippos and whales, a bit like the Andrew Sarkis, rather than pigs. Um, but its skull is generally pig-shaped, which is why we are oh, they. Uh, paleontologists and that presume it is an omnivore 
Also, probably a bit of common knowledge co going in there, you know. Eh, it probably is. Uh, so here we go. Let's see its eating animation. Oh, meat. Oh, cool. Oh, a bit of breaking off as well. Oh, God. That looked angry. Okay. So let's feed him all the way. Have a little piggy family. I love it in the rainforest. That's awesome. What a setting. So let's see its happy animation. Ooh, he's a good boy. Or a girl. He's a good girl. I like the ears give a lot of expression, actually, when you do that. Oh, there's the angry one. Oh, yep, there's the angry one. Oh, God, you... you. I mean, this thing was about four foot four. So, I mean, if you know how tall you are, that's up to its shoulders. So, its back is four foot four. Um... And, you know, it, it, I mean, you could probably scale it up from there. You can see how big it's sort of, how long it was. And, um, can you imagine that head? And, sorry, the, even the mouth. You could fit your entire head in that mouth and it would clamp down and probably crush your skull. <laughs> as creepy as that and horrible as that sounds, yeah, that's probably what that bone-crushing jaw could do. I mean, the reason, probably one of the reasons why it has such a strong jaw is because it was an omnivore and it ate bone as well as anything else and it just crushed up carcasses. Um, lo loads of good scavengers did, like the T-Rex had a bone crushing bite. Um, and a lot of people are like, well, the T-Rex was a scavenger. No, it wasn't, it was a predator. Well, it was probably both guys. Most successful carnivores find a way to adapt to both lifestyles. Um, it's not really a lifestyle, I suppose, just a, a diet. So let's get it to level 20. Uh, speed up. Of course it doesn't cost too much. It's a shame it didn't do it straight away, but it is, of course, like with all of the other glacier creatures, absolutely tiny. <laughs> what is that, a piggy or a button in there? Good lord. So here to two star. Ooh, gets a little bit of lighter coloring. Nice, nice, nice. Ooh, he's a cutie little piggy. Oh, you're the level 10. Here's the level 20. Okay, I think we have seen a level 40, but I can't remember it for the life of me. So let's speed up the tiny pig. Good God. Incubator. It's an incubator. <laughs> uh, we've got one more to do. And thankfully, sped up first time. You, I think because it's a rare, there's more of a chance of it doing that. I like how the dramatic, zoom in, what's it going to be? <laughs> so let's feed it. Not a change of diet. It's of course going to be the same. Not as amazing or as, it, well, it's good animation. It's awesome. But it's not as interesting as it would be, you know, chasing a dodo. But I feel like maybe we've milked the dodo hard enough. <laughs> we should get, like, a dodo as an animal. So I feel like as far as creatures go, the ones we're waiting for in this game is Brachiosaurus, highly anticipated. Maybe a quadruped Spinosaur, but I highly doubt that's coming. Um, and a uh, dodo. I think a dodo is waiting. And, of course, the Mosodon. The Megalodon and Mosasaurus hybrid. When that thing comes out, baby, that's gonna be beast. Oh, it looks like he's bald. I don't know, that color makes him look like he's got no hair in his head. Now, the thing is, I feel like the reason why these guys are small in the incubator is because in order to make room in this game, data-wise, so it's not like 20 million gigs big, they've scaled down everything. So this arena is actually quite small, and the battle arena is quite small too. So that's a level 20. That's a level 30. So, yeah, I mean, the stripes in that are more, uh, more there. The tongue, especially, is uh, a brighter color. And, I mean, in comparison to this, the tongue isn't as strong a colored. It's way more red. So again, like the difference between this one and the level 30 is probably the hue and saturation have been put up a lot. Oh, d does he trip? Hold on, does he trip? But oh, this seems like there's some weird... Are you catching that in the animation? It's, it's, the, it's the first step, ready? It's like the back leg. The way we're looking at him, it's the back right leg. It's that one there. Just watch it. Oh, I don't know. Maybe... I don't... It seems like there's something not right there. It could be just me. But I'm not, I'm not having to go with the, an the anim animators or anything. Because last time I did that with a game, I think it was uh, Mesozoica when they released that freaking beta. 
there was a guy who was an animator who got really annoyed at me for apparently criticizing his flawless animation. <laughs> so, um, just as a word of caution, if you're an animator, you've got to take criticism. I would rather somebody um, told me my animation needed work than rather said it was perfect because if you're really in the mindset or in any line of work thinking that whatever you do is perfect, um, you've got a problem. And a problem that is not easily fixed either. Oh, I like the vines up there. They're quite nice. Although one is just scaled up, I will admit. <laughs> the other one, the other one's like squished and the other one's normal. So here we go. A max. Oh my god, it's got horns coming out of every orifice. Beautiful. Stampeding piglets. I always try to do a little bit extra with my uh, glacier um, thumbnails. I did actually, I put it in this one. In the U, not U moon, was it? It was the dolly. The dolly. Uh, oh my god, that thing is hideous. <laughs> Extra horns everywhere. Um, <laughs> oh wow, yeah, with the dolly. I put it up now, but the anim the thumbnail I said I was going to do was dolly floating on the surface with seagulls pecking it. And I made it, but I didn't put it as the thumbnail. Just because I didn't really feel like it was thumbnail potential, if you know what I mean. Um, it looked awesome, but oh my god, look at this thing. It's beautiful. Beautifully disgusting. <laughs> it looks like it's thicker on top. Like it's got its shoulders are way more buffer. Its neck muscles. But it has extra horns on its head, on its eyebrows, and on its uh, actual snout as well. So let's feed this thing. And I never even looked at the health and attack. So it seems like it's not. A, it's a bit like the U Moon. It's not. Oh, I maxed it up. I, oops, I maxed it up. God damn it. We're just gonna have to max up another one. <laughs> so it doesn't look like it's... Uh, it, oh no, hold on. It probably can kill itself in two hits. Which... So far, I'm pretty sure apart from the mammoth, every glacier creature can do so. Um, so... It's not... I wouldn't say it's a sweeper. It can kill itself in two hits. However, it's close. So... Um, more of an attacker than a defense, I would say. So without further ado, let's put this thing in the battle arena. So here's our lineup so far. We look look at that. I didn't max up anything else, but I made a mistake with Entleton, damn it. <laughs> Otherwise, he'd probably be below Andrew Sarkis. Possibly. Uh, they are quite even, actually. Andrew Sarkis has like a little bit more attack, but Entleton has a little bit more health. So, let's put in these creatures that are about the same. Smilodon probably needs to be level 20 to be considered. Ooh! Sarcastodon and Phosphorus. These guys aren't maxed. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is the arena is massive. Absolutely massive. And if you look at the floor, the textures are stretched beyond... You can't even tell what they are. There's more texture on that blade of grass than there is on the ground, which makes it look really weird. So I, I would say just scale up the ground or scale down the, either way, like just fix that. And I feel like the bears, like the, all the opponents in this glacier arena are too far away. Like I, if you're on an iPhone, you could barely see that. Or maybe they bring them closer on there. Oh God, the bear go, okay, yep. Well, the killer kitty's dead. <laughs> Oh, we've got the advantage. We're killing one hit. We'll go for two just in case. Go, Andrew Sarkis. Whack it. I think Savannah or Savannah. Oh, no. Savannah's weak to cave. Okay. It's going to be the terror bird versus the killer piggy for the fight. Oh, no. Never mind. In he comes. Doesn't go for any attack. That's okay. We can still take this thing on two hits. Ooh, three hits. Okay, two block. There's nothing he can do. He's dead. He does go for the two block. Oh, double scratch. Fury swipes. Brings in the skinny kitty. It'd be the skinny spotty kitty. But there's spotty buddy. Oh, it doesn't go for any attack. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go for four reserves, three block, then switch in Entladon, and then kill it. Hopefully he kills us, though, in this go. No, he doesn't. Okay. Okay, Entelodon. Um. You, you come in, dude. Oh, he gets a cool intro. I love it. <laughs> right, attack it with a full-on seven. 
Oh, oh. Oh, that was awesome. He like did a little hero pose, like I am the best. And you know, that may be the first creature we've had that can do a handstand. <laughs> What are we going to get? 25? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. It's only a battle ballerina. We weren't going to win amazing prizes anyway. And that is the Endelodon Unlocked. We've actually waited quite a while for a glacier creature to come around. And just as soon as we get a tournament creature, we get a glacier creature. So fingers crossed for the next weekends, it'll be the same. Like a tournament creature, then a glacier creature. Tournament creature, glacier creature. So hopefully in the next big update, because it was... I don't know whether it's a slip of the mouth or a wrong, you know, term used, but in the Q&A for, um, when Jurassic World did that Q&A, the lead animator said in the next update, they'll get more aquatic creatures or more glacier creatures. So, I mean, that's hinting towards more different, like, different ones. Me like, Megaloceros was teased in that one. Uh, I'll put up a picture or whatever, I, I don't know. I'll put up something, hopefully, if I remember. If anything, James remembers. Oh, aren't you beautiful? Take a break afterwards, okay? You've earned it. And, um... So they, they showcase that, and also... Like, I mean, I'm hoping we get to level 80. I really do. In the next update, hopefully there is, um... You know, aquatic hybrids, and maybe glacier hybrids as well. That would be really nice. And hopefully, maybe some new creatures. Um, if I was them, if I was Luigi right now, I'd be thinking, what kind of hybrid can I make the everyone's going to be like, wow, that's awesome. Like, Indominus Rex has, I think, its own animation. I'm pretty sure it's the only creature in the game right now, apart from the glacier creatures, of course, and any aquatics that are unique. Um, Indominus Rex is the only creature that has lasted as long with not having any creature copy its animation, which makes sense because it's Indominus Rex, it's the star attraction. Um, but... It would be great if there was some way to customize, like, add on, like, even kind of a robotic claw. <laughs> that would be awesome. Or a helmet. Some kind of armor to give it, like, extra health boosts or attack boosts or something like that. Maybe I can, I don't know, a gene I could put on it or... But anyway, back to... Back, I, I got off track. I got... I fanboyed. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want a war machine. Anyway, uh, if there was a hybrid that had its own unique animations, just like Indominus Rex, that would be what I was looking at. I'd be looking at right now. Um, also, it's strange. Like, he's got a, a scale next to his head that has no skin weights. It's just rigid binded to the, uh, the rig. And it's not moving, so when he turns his head left, like you can see there, it stays stationary. It's not smooth binded at all. Which makes sense for some of the spikes not to have smooth binding because they'll stretch and squish and it'll look weird. But that- Oh god, oh god! Okay, uh, well, anyway guys, I'm gonna leave the episode here. If you enjoyed it, leave a like until next time. I'll see you later. Bye!